All right, in this video, we're going to take the design from the last video, which was this 8-3 star with the points extended, and tile it. But I wanted to show you the idea. Our design will look better than this. You can clearly see where the square tiles that are pieced together here. But notice how there are some unexpected shapes in this pattern. Uh, there are these four pointed stars here. And then we have uh, these shapes here, one, two, three, four, five, six, these irregular hexagons that are in between the stars. This is pretty common uh, when you when you do these tilings. You get this, these uh, edge things uh, end up connecting with the, the, the identical edge pattern on another tile and giving a, a richer uh, overall design. So this is the goal. We're going to do this all at once, though, without uh, photocopiers and scissors. So... Um, I'm going to get right to it. So the first thing we need to do is to start making some squares. Now we're going to make them smaller so we can fit more of them in. And uh, so I'm going to start out with a circle. And it's a circle that I can fit two of uh, either way. Now if I were just making a single circumscribed square from here, then I would make my two marks. This time, however, I'm going to extend this line outwards because I know I need another square over here and that's going to require another circle. Where is the center of that circle? Well, I can find it. My compass is set to the radius of the circle, so I make a mark. That's going to be the center of another circle, of another square, so I can make that circle. Now remember the next step in making a circumscribed square is to find the perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to open my compass more than half. I'm going to go quite a bit. And then make a mark above the circle. And above over here. While I'm at it though, I might as well make the perpendicular bisector for the other circle. So I'm doing two identical constructions in tandem. Now just like before, I line up the center of the circle with that intersection I constructed, and I, I care about where it crosses the circle, but I'm going to extend that line further down because I know there's another circle down here that I want to construct. I want to make uh, four squares. Same over here. I'll find out where this line would cross the circle, subdividing the circle into four pieces, and I draw a line down. So now I can find, if I reset my compass, I can find the center of these two other circles that are going to have uh, circumscribed squares. So there's one of them. And there's the other one. So I'll make those two circles. And notice I haven't made any squares yet. So now I have four circles, each of which is going to have a circumscribed uh, square. Now I've subdivided the top two circles into fourths. The bottom two circles uh, so far are just in half. Notice that if I connect the centers, if I line my ruler up at the centers of these circles, and I mark off where that would cross the circle, I now have sub subdivided all the circles um, into, i extend my line, line a little bit, all the circles into, uh, into fourths. At this point, I can start uh, connecting these edge points to make squares. I don't even need to make uh, the usual ones. I can. Now, there's nothing to stop me from making some marks here to find the corners. They're, they're pretty close. Maybe I should be doing it. This is one of those things where more points can be helpful. Maybe I will just uh, have a more precise 
construction. So I have a off-camera construction there. And uh, you, you can do this. You can do each square uh, individually. Oops, missed one. Um, or, again, you can use the... Uh, You can use the sides of the circles here um, to line those up with the ruler. Oops. So I'm going to go ahead and um, finish uh, connecting these lines, and then I'll come back on. All right, we have our four squares here with four circles. The next step is we want to divide each circle into eighths so that we can construct our octogram. Now, it's, it's not four times the work, however, because if you line up the centers of the circle with the corners of the squares, where the ruler crosses these two circles gives me four marks instead of just two. So some of this becomes a bit more efficient. And if you're not comfortable combining those steps right now, that's fine. Line everything up. You can still do them per circle. I'm going to finish doing those marks and then come back on. All right, so I've subdivided each circle into eight parts. Now comes the octograms, or the eight three stars. I'm going to do uh, this one here and then come back on uh, and then talk about how you can reduce the amount of work. So I'm going to cut out for a second and uh, do that one star. I have put in my octogram, my 8-3 star, and I've also extended the lines to the corners. So if you need to do that, go ahead and do that now. Now, once again, um, making four of these isn't four times the work. It's a little less than that. And as you do these, you probably will start to notice that these lines seem, and it's not a coincidence, to um, line up with other marks and other tiles. So you can, once, you, once you've done this a couple times, you can see that this one line can be drawn, which does some of the work over here. And uh, not, not there. Um, what's another good one? Well, this one will work. So if I were to trace this line down here, that one works. And then this line. And notice how I am uh, I'm off a little bit down here, but I really want the lines to match at the tile boundary. That's going to be very noticeable. So I'm willing to have something off down here if it matches up here. So um, one way or the other, go ahead and make octograms in all of the other circles, and then I'll come back on. Now, if you're looking at this and you're shaking your head, you know, there are all kinds of lines uh, here. It's, it's not unusual. It's uh, and it gets a little bit worse uh, in the direction that we're pushing. A um, couple things now. So if this were uh, homework, what I'd probably have you do is maybe leave uh, one square with the lines in it and have the other, you know, three or four or five, whatever, inked and colored to show the beauty. What I want to do now with this is to go ahead and um, work through a couple steps coming back on periodically to show the transformation of this into a finished design so you can get a, a feeling for how these individual octograms with the extended corners um, become uh, a more robust repeating pattern. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to ink uh, the lines, which means uh, you know, erasing these lines here uh, that make the octagon and also these horizontal lines. So again, in the homework uh, for 101, you would leave some of these lines, uh, maybe in one corner, so I can see your construction. But uh, I'll be back on in a few minutes. All right, coming back briefly, I've inked over all the lines, and now I'm going to go ahead and erase all the pencil marks. The Pencil marks here, uh, with the octagons, the lines, the squares, the circles, the entire thing. So the next time you see this, it'll be just the design. So here we go. So this is the finished design. All of the pencil marks are gone. 
And one of the things I want to point out to you is notice that there are no squares. You can you can see perhaps depending on how this video turns out that there are some light pencil marks here, but there's no square there's, there's no square tile, but there is something that's repeating that is square. You know that within this now invisible square is a pattern that's repeating over and over again here four times. But when you look at this pattern and your, your eyes are drawn in various directions, maybe to this star or, or to some of these shapes, um, you see this octagon here. There's all sorts of stuff going on here. These, this eight-pointed star, this eight-pointed star. It's not immediately clear what what was behind this design, the square grid that we made, and then the uh, divisions of eight on the circle. But if you think about this, you can see there's something square about this. At uh, these eight two stars, or the bigger eight three stars, do sit at the corners of a square. Right? You could definitely lay a square over that. And one of the things uh, that we need to be cognizant of is uh, in the future I'm going to be giving you designs like this and asking you to figure out how it was made. And the detective work is going to amount to something like this. Uh, you see these repeating. There must be some fundamental square tile that you'll identify. This seems to be the chunk that's repeating. There's an eight-pointed star in here. Eight-pointed stars are built inside of circles from squares, or can be. And so if I have a square, I know that I can make a circle, and I can make this big star. If I try that out, I'll get a little star for free, although I'll need to delete some lines. And uh, this stuff here, these are just extensions of that eight-pointed star. But it's tricky because in trying to reverse engineer this, we can't even worry about these four-point stars or these irregular hexagons. They come for free. They just come along for the ride. I'm sure, you know, uh, for the artisans that did this, they weren't arbitrary. But for us, in trying to figure out how these things were done, we can't worry about that chunk uh, or that chunk. The designs that I'll, I'll assign you are easy enough to put inside of a square or a hexagon and then to reverse engineer them by basic constructions. So it's, it's an interesting idea that fairly simple rules give rise to a fairly complicated um, tiling. And keep in mind this tiling doesn't have any color on it, it doesn't have any floral uh, ornamentation, uh, so-called arabesque. There's no calligraphy. There could be calligraphy in some pieces. Um, these lines could be thickened and then woven. So there's a great deal more sophistication that can be placed on this for a finished piece. And all of that disguises, in a wonderful way, the underlying work in setting up this uh, bit of geometry. So here we have geometry as a tool, as scaffolding, onto which we can place color and weave and calligraphy and arabesque to create some wonderful uh, decoration for a floor or a wall. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, have a nice day.